Well, 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 we are back and we are ready to go on the show that if you're a college football fan is all about the underdog, usually the team on the road, certainly the team that is not thought that highly of. It is Three Dog Thursday here as part of the Winning Cures Everything platforms, winningcureseverything.com. I am the somewhat competent host, TJ Reeves, the man behind Winning Cures is, uh, look, I, 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 my tag team partner. I got no other uh, better way to describe it. I'm tagging him in again for week one of college football. Hello, Gary Seegers. Great to be back with you and a buffet of games to look over and, and get some underdogs with. Oh, thank goodness. And, and my wife is just enthralled that it is Thursday night all the way through Monday night. Uh, <laughs> she started trying to make plans for Sunday, for Monday. I said, ah, hold up. No, uh, LSU no. Florida State on Sunday night. That's Sorry, State. have we a game. Get, have a game. Yes. Got to watch a game. Got to see a game. Got to handicap a game. Got to have a game. And by the uh, way, we should the way make, we got to make mention of this again. Mama Seegers is due like any time. So are we yes. trying to plan the baby around like a Monday or a Tuesday early in the college football season where there's so, not a game? So here's the, I know <laughs> we're going to have a TV in the uh, delivery room. So I'm good whenever. Okay. Really. <laughs> <laughs> keep the sound the down thing. keep the sound down if that is yes. the case uh, hey, when my uh i still remember this when my uh my now 18 year old was born uh, i had a packers and i want to say it was the jets packers jets <laughs> preseason game going in the room brett Favre was still the quarterback at the time oh. uh yeah it was Borderline it sickness, <laughs> but he doesn't remember the spread and he doesn't remember if he covered no. or not no, no. Uh, for that day. <laughs> so here's what we do. Gary and I are going to be here every week as part of the Winning Cures platforms talking underdogs on Thursday. And here's a couple of big things. Number one, these picks are worth every penny you're paying for them. We never charge for them, but understand whatever advice, whatever handicapping you're getting. It's yeah, we, we aren't charging you anything for this, but traditionally we've been really good through the years gary has been with me for several years now either on the audio version through our friends at bet us we did the video last year we decided this year let's just do it through winning cures everything.com so we're here every thursday giving you college football underdogs and we might even go right in on a thursday night underdog depending on what it is but in this case we've got friday games saturday games sunday games gary and i will each have three of them so you will have six underdog plays for this week. Uh, I do have to say to you, before we get to week one, last week was week zero. We did have a couple of things with Notre Dame and Navy. The host, what do I know, kept saying, stay away from Navy. Stay yep. away from that yep. large line. Did I or did I not say to you, I could see this being a 30 or 35 point game in the second nope. half. That's exactly Absolutely. what it was. So hopefully you stayed away from that pooch last week. Navy's going to have a long year. It looks like oh, Gary. It's it was be just, bad. Or, or, is no, or is Notre Dame really that good with Hartman? Do we say a little of both? What what would you make of that I, quick take? If you go back and watch uh, some of the replays, you watch some of the, uh, you know, there's a lot of scheme guys on on social media, and they are going through showing you exactly what happened on certain plays. And there were Notre Dame wide receivers just running wide open. <laughs> now, I don't know that they're going to be able to do that going right. forward, but Sam Hartman is a, a better quarterback than they've had there in quite some time. He's fantastic. Like, I think he gives them a a – puncher's chance right of right. being able to do something big this year but man that schedule's rough uh look they got they got this week against tennessee state next week they go to raleigh against dc state so we'll we'll see what happens and you've got some other games looming too always the traditional one with usc but they've got an ohio state game looming when, when the four. buckeyes are in the top 10 so uh, ohio state by the way has not played at Notre Dame since William Jefferson Clinton was the president. How about in the 90s? It has been a while. So uh, anyway, that's a little Notre Dame uh, talk. By the way, we're going to talk about Hawaii in a few moments. And I got to credit you. You thought you believed in them more. And I'm I'm more converted now on Timmy Chang and Hawaii after how they hung in uh, with Vanderbilt and covered for Three Dog Thursday purposes. So we'll talk a little bit about that. And by the way, you were big on Jacksonville State, first ever FBS game, Conference USA opener, new members to the conference, Rich Rod and Jacksonville State, and they got the outright win. I say bravo to Gary Seegers last week. Week they zero, won that three game. Thursday. They won that game with a 40% postgame win expectancy. They had a 25% success rate for the game. Like they did not do anything to really help themselves win the game. Uh, but Utah, or Utah, UTEP, is mm -hmm. in fact that bad 
right? They they beat themselves multiple times. Uh, Jacksonville State made plays. They absolutely did, but, man, they were hanging on by the skin of their teeth. Yeah. So it, it was it was good to get that one in there. Uh, but, yeah, they – whew. Uh, you mentioned Hawaii, and we'll talk about them in a minute. Hawaii lost that game against Vandy and had over an 80% uh, post-game win expectancy. So, wow. The way the stats went, Hawaii should have won the ball game. But, all right. It is what More it is. on that, there's a tease coming up. Okay, so here's what we do. And again, thank you for hanging out here with us, whether it is the video show through winningcureseverything.com or the audio podcast. Again, if you're only hearing us, come see what these male models look like on winningcureseverything.com and the Winning Cures platforms. You could see the show uh, through YouTube and through all the social outlets uh, as well. But also take us with you and hear the audio version of this show. It's out every week on Thursday, hence the name. Three Dog Thursday, and let's begin. Let's roll the sleeves up. Are you ready to go for weekend oh, number prepared. one here in earnest? Uh, and where do you want to go? I believe you want you want to go in my neck of the woods. I'm based in West Central Florida. Gary is based in the Mid South in Memphis, Tennessee, uh, my hometown. By the way, w- where do you want to? Are you are you leaning the way of the team where my wife graduated, a proud alum of the University of South Florida, the University of Sun and Fun? USF Bulls make the show the weekend one. <laughs> you better believe it. Alex Golesh, the new coach down there. Uh, the, the line on this one against Western Kentucky is the Hilltoppers favored by 12. Okay. And a lot of people, obviously, they get Austin Reed back. They got Malachi Corley back at wide receiver. Uh, they did lose their starting center. He transferred over to uh, Texas Tech. Uh, Rusty Stats, I believe his name is. But he, they they got some dudes back. They're number 119 in returning production on defense. And I, I like what they did last year on defense, but number 119 returning production, I don't know that I trust them, especially in the back seven. Look, South Florida, they were 4-1 and one against the spread as a road dog last year. Obviously a new coaching staff, whatever, but they do still have Jerry Bohannon at quarterback. They haven't named him as the starter. They've got some other options. they got some dudes down there. But you look at the overall average 247 rank of talent, on these entire rosters, USF is number 63. Western Kentucky is number 114. If Alex Golesh is a competent head coach, he'll have an advantage in this game. So Western Kentucky, 3-3 three and three against the spread as a home favorite last year. I'm going to ride South Florida plus the 12. Okay, so here's the dangerous things. It is a lot of points. Uh, Golish comes into a mess. I mean, Gary, I know you know this. They've won one FBS game the last two years. That's why Jeff Scott got fired as as the head coach. Golish has never been a head coach before. Now you're on the road. It is a lot of points. I'm just iffy. Then again, it's first game for both teams, so you don't know. And one more variable with Hurricane Idalia. We kept, we kept, you know, it's Vidalia Onion, so we kept saying Idalia. But now everybody wants this Spanish, the Espanol, Idalia, uh, Idalia, uh, like it's Italian. Uh, Idalia, <laughs> Idalia luckily largely missed most of the populated areas of Florida and slammed into north central Florida, not as populated. Uh, the town of Perry, uh, the, the flooding in Cedar Key in the western yeah. part of the state is bad. But I mean, All it missed Bend, right? it me- yeah, the, the whole Big Bend area of Florida, but it missed Tallahassee, for example, where the Seminoles are and the and the state capital it missed the tampa bay area it shot through valdosta georgia not as powerful and is headed out to the atlantic ocean so that has messed with preparation for usf and delayed them it also messed with preparation for florida state in tallahassee so you throw that variable in gary is still riding though with the green and gold usf bulls getting a lot of points at Western Kentucky, and again, that is an afternoon matchup on Saturday. There is doggy number one, weekend number one, second week of the show on Three Dog Thursday. May I back up, please, to Friday night? Speaking of the Hawaii Rainbow Warriors, when last we saw them in Nashville, almost 4,800 miles away from Honolulu, they acquitted themselves quite well last Saturday night, hung in the game. I, I thought they might wear down. I thought Vanderbilt, who put 63 points on them a year ago in Honolulu, might pull away. That did not happen. Uh, Shager, the quarterback, played well in the game. They hung in in the fourth quarter. They covered. Now they're back home with a Stanford team. And I'm going to pull this stat out because you and I talked about this, Gary Seegers, on Three Dog Thursday a year ago. And you kind of cautioned me. 
you didn't put the yellow flag up and wave it like NASCAR, like they like to do, but you kind of cautioned me on this. I am big in this week, the last couple of years, in looking at a team that has played a game, you know where I'm going, versus a team that has not played a game, which is Stanford in this case, making their 2023 debut. Now, you warned me a year ago that our buddy Kyle Hunter, who you're with every week on the Bet US college football show, watch that, free plug on their platforms. Gary's the host. They do a great job. Kyle Stat. Going into last season, teams that had not, like a 10-year sample size, teams that had not played a game were still able to cover at like a 57% clip against a team that had played a game. That's correct. All right. A year ago, I was undaunted by that. I took three of those in week one last year. Uh, Three times I took the underdog who had played a game versus a team that had not played a game. And I'm going right back to it. I was one, one, and one a year ago. One of them was Florida State with LSU. Florida State had played a game. LSU had not. I was on that. More on Florida State here in a few minutes. I'm going back to this stat. Hawaii's played a game. Stanford, who was three and nine last year. Troy Taylor, the first year coach, has not played a game. Plus, I got Hawaii at home and I'm getting points, I just I think they might win this game outright with uh, the skill players. I, I don't know if, Stan, if Stanford's more physical than them or not. I don't know. A quick thought on my pick of Hawaii. So Hawaii did go 4-2 and two against the spread as a uh, home dog last year. Uh, they got like a lot that. better. Yep, they got a lot better at the end of the year. Uh, they played well last week, well enough to win. Like I said, 81.8% uh, postgame win expectancy last week. Uh, shot themselves in the foot a couple of times, had two goal-to-go situations, and could not get the ball in the end zone. Vandy, of course, a kick return touchdown, uh, a lot of things that went wrong, but obviously that's good things headed back home. The issue for me, my number on this is Stanford minus eight. Mm. Uh, I didn't like it when it was you know Hawaii plus 10 or Stanford minus 10. I didn't like it then, but this thing has come so far back. Uh, so I, the public is on Hawaii a little bit for Three Dog Thursday purposes uh, real quick? Big time. Public is big time on Hawaii. And on top of that, uh, again, that number, 57%, still holds true. Uh, stats were about the same last year as, as they have been. But uh, what I'm worried about is it was a late night in Nashville. Uh, I mean, the game didn't end until, what, 1230 uh, Eastern time, I believe. It's a six-day week because they're playing the game on Friday instead of Saturday, so it's a short right. week having to fly all the way back to Hawaii. Then you got to prep. Uh, I wonder, you know, how much, how much did that Vanderbilt game take out of them? All the stuff that they put in to try and win that one. Eh, we we shall see. Uh, Stanford still has a massive talent advantage here. Uh, I know that everybody's talked about David Shaw didn't have enough players and what, and they didn't have enough players to handle you know, the Pac-12 going up against USC and Utah and whoever. But I think they might have enough players to be able to handle this, not to mention Hawaii doesn't know what Stanford's going to look like on offense, right? And Troy Taylor, what he did at Sacramento State, he was fantastic there. He's going to change some things up. He's going to put his guys in the best position to win. I'm personally going to stay away, but I can right. see why you would go this direction. He's going those two words, stay away, that we talked about last week. I just like Hawaii here. You make a great point about the short week. And again, this game is 11 Eastern time, but it's five local time, six-hour time difference uh, coming up on Friday night on the shorter week here because of television. Uh, Let's see. Let's see what Hawaii has at home in that atmosphere. That's my first underdog. As you watch us on Three Dog Thursday, you hear us on the podcast Uh, We give out these underdogs on Thursday. Gary's going to a Sunday Big Ten pooch. This could be a hairy hound. They have had all kinds of problems off the field for Northwestern. Now they're on the field in a Big Ten game. And what what has you right now staring down the Northwestern Wildcats for Three Dog Thursday? And so it has been an absolute disaster for them, right? Uh but, you know, they fired their uh, coach, Pat Fitzgerald, back at the end of July at some point. They've had enough time to kind of uh, circle the wagons a little bit, right? David Braun, the interim head coach, he was the defensive coordinator at North Dakota State just last year. Uh, he got hired in. He was made the interim because he hadn't been there, right? That's a, right. Maybe that's the positive here is that he was not here when all of this stuff started with the, uh, the hazing and whatnot, right? Uh, but on the other side. I mean, Rutgers is now a six and a half point favorite. That line shot up and it hasn't moved uh, since the end of July, right? This thing opened at four. It shot up, 
you know, two and a half points. I think it got up to seven at one point, a little bit of buyback. Uh, but Rutgers is two and eight against the spread in their last 10 at home against Big Ten teams. Uh, toss on that, Northwestern, as bad as they were last year, they were three and two against the spread as a road dog. Northwestern has the better quarterback, Ben Bryant, transferred over from Cincinnati. They've got the better running back, Cam Porter. And on top of that, I think Braun is going to take the handcuffs off of uh, Bajakian, the offensive coordinator. I think you're going to see a different version of Northwestern here. Rutgers should not be favored over any any <laughs> team by six and a half points. So I, I will take uh, Northwestern to cover that six and a half. I don't know that they win, but this feels like a field goal game either way. These are two not good teams. And uh, and Greg Schiano, like, it, well, I think this is like the fifth straight year with a new offensive coordinator. I mean, it, hell, it might be ten, but it's there's no reason for Rutgers to be favored by six and a half, even with all the chaos that's going on. You in make Evans. it like a field goal. You think they should be at, like a field yeah. goal? It's too many points. At my number on it is actually Rutgers minus one. Wow, uh, but I could see a field goal like that would make sense. They're at home, home field advantage, you know, whatever. Uh, but six and a half is just that's that's wild. OK, so a couple of things. I mean, obviously, Greg Schiano was a walking disaster as the NFL coach here for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I'm not breaking a nuclear secret since he's come back to Rutgers. They've been awful in the Big Ten. I mean, there's no hiding from it. Yes, they're terrible. Their average margin of loss is terrible. I wonder how much jeopardy he's in. I wonder if they really care at Rutgers anymore uh, about whether they win, lose, or whatever. This is a Sunday early game. Again, with the Labor Day weekend, this is a Sunday early game. And you like Northwestern to maybe rally around all the controversy and all the problems and get out and take some anger out and some frustration out. First game for both teams. So you will take the Wildcats in the Big Ten, and I'm seeing that line again, depending on where you get it, at six and a half, six, something like that. Uh, for this weekend for underdog number two for you. Okay, I'm going to back up again from Sunday to Saturday. Here I go again, Gary Seegers, with my theme, the San Jose State Spartans, who a week ago played better against USC than I think a lot of us thought. USC did pull away and win the game, although they did not cover because it was, what, like a 35-point line, an 87-point line, whatever it was. They won by 28, <laughs> but they didn't cover it. They did pull away in the second half. I, I was curious. I mean, San Jose State is in the game at halftime. They've got the former quarterback who's now a wide receiver who caught three touchdowns uh, in this game um, that showed some explosiveness. Nash, Nick Nash, Nick yep. Nash, who had been a quarterback. Nash caught three touchdowns in the game. So now you've got San Jose State coming home here to play Oregon State. Oregon State with a lot of expectation on them. First year uh, uh, that they've really had this kind of anticipation to maybe win the Pac-12. Well, first of all, you got to have a winning record in the Pac-12. Then you got to make the title game. Then you got to win the title game. Last year, as we know it, for the Pac-12. So uh, you've got that implosion going on. Where does Oregon State end up? Could Oregon State end up in the Mountain West where they're regularly playing San Jose State and Fresno State and Boise State and Wyoming and those teams? Don't know. This game at San Jose State, Gary. I ask you quickly: what what was Oregon? What is Oregon State doing playing at San Jose State anyway? Uh, here in so, this, you you have an explanation, real quick. A lot of these smaller Pac-12 teams have been doing this against Mountain West teams. Uh, this, by the way, this game might be a conference matchup going forward. Right, Mountain so, West. Yeah, we'll we'll see what ends up happening there, but. Uh, no, this is just, it's the same thing that the ACC does, right? NC State is playing at UConn on Thursday night. It's, okay, you know, it, two for ones are, are right. certainly becoming a more prevalent thing. Uh, so you give them one home game, they come to your place two times for a little bit cheaper than what you would have paid them for one. It, it's a cost-saving metric. It's, you know, it, I don't know why they would, if you're a big-time, you know, athletic program, there's no reason for you to do this. But, alas, here we are. Yep, we are. And again, for Oregon State, they've got the Clemson quarterback, uh, DJ Uagalele. Uh, he's come out there and won the starting job, but it's a new situation for him. And I am getting a ton of points with a Spartans team that played last week. I'm back to my theme. They're at home. They're going to, I don't know that they win this game, but I think they're going to be close enough uh, in this matchup with the Oregon State Beavers. So give me San Jose State. Uh, off of having gotten some things worked out 
in weekend number zero against uh, USC. I will take them, and I'm getting what? I'm, I'm getting like, depending on where you look at it and see it, I'm getting at least 10, 12 16 points. And a half. I'm getting yeah. 16 and a half now? That's a 16 gift. 16 and a half, yeah. I would have it, thought, it's been like, sitting at the same line. Yeah. What do I know? But I would have thought this was like a touchdown. Oregon State by a touchdown makes sense to me. Again, am I that far off? Are your numbers that far off that this is 16 and a half for the Spartans? Uh, so at South Point over in Vegas, that thing just popped to 17. Like I just saw it. So you, you can get a 17 me. out there if, if you're in Vegas, of course. Give it to, give it to me. Um, I, my number on this has Oregon State by over three touchdowns. Uh, wow. And I trust it, right? And so right. They're, this Oregon State defense is loaded with upperclassmen. They've got 10 seniors that are going to start, and the other is a junior. Uh, they got a lot of dudes. And on the offensive side of the ball, They've already got five all-conference caliber players before they even bring in DJU, who I think Jonathan Smith is going to actually know how to utilize him much better than uh, Brandon Streeter did over at Clemson, right? I, I just I don't trust what Clemson had going on on offense. They misused him. Uh, I think that Oregon State, with Martinez at running back, I mean, those, those hog mollies on the offensive line are serious. They have a good system there. I think they're going to come out swinging in this game. Uh, not to mention the fact that San Jose State, they're 2-5 and five against the spread in their last seven against the Pac-12. I so, hear you. you All know, right. Just, we differ on this. Again, I'm going with the team that's played a game, and you know this, and they're at home for the Spartans here against Oregon State. We'll see if they're fired up. We'll see what kind of environment there is in NoCal uh, for this matchup. So we've given you four underdogs. By the way, we should also make mention, if you're trying to go to any of these games, San Jose State and Oregon State, like we were talking about, the – uh, the big matchups, I will be at Penn State, West Virginia, calling it on national radio for Compass Media Network's coverage of, uh, of West Virginia, Penn State. LaVar Arrington, the former Nittany Lion All-American linebacker, will be on the call with me. Uh, that I, I, I'm staying away, obviously, because I'm doing the game. That's a three-touchdown line for Penn State at home, top 10 in the preseason. If you're trying to go to any of these games, Penn State, West Virginia, we're going to talk about LSU and Florida State and Orlando coming up. But whether it's uh, the Buckeyes playing at Indiana this weekend, on and on with all these different college games, Alabama at home with Middle Tennessee State, and on and on. Use our friends at Ticket Smarter, the Ticket Smarter mobile app, TicketSmarter.com. That's the best resource you can find on the secondary market. They've got great uh, technology. Their algorithms do a great job with the secondary pricing. Uh, your purchase is always safe and guaranteed through Ticket Smarter's technology. And we've even got a promo code for you. If you're looking to go to any of these games and you're going to spend 100 bucks or more on a ticket, Take $10 off with the three letters WCE for Winning Cures Everything and the number 10. WCE 10 gets you $10 off your order with Ticket Smarter if you spend 100 bucks. And Gary, like those old Ginsu Steak Knives commercials, how much would you pay now? $19.95, $29.95. But wait, there's more. We have a second tier offer through Ticket Smarter. You can save $10 off a $100 order, or you can save $20 off a $300 or more order for tickets. And more than likely, like if you're trying to go to Florida State and LSU, the get-in price, Gary, that because I just looked again, insane. is $500 at Camping World Stadium, the old Citrus Bowl. $500 to get in. The best seats are over $1,500 in the lower level. So also on the Ticket Smarter offer, use WCE20, winning cures everything, WCE20, take $20 off your order of $300 or more. You need to think smarter with Ticket Smarter in the mobile app. Check out the pricing for all the games everywhere, college football, the NFL. Promo code is WCE10 for 10 bucks off. Take 20 off a $300 order or more. WCE20, why would you not do that? Take advantage with a sponsor, <laughs> Ticket Smarter, here for the college football weekend one. I, I was looking Notre Dame, Ohio State, get in price over $600 right now at Notre Dame yeah. Stadium. Just to get in, just to get in. Lower level. $1,500, $2,000 for the Irish and the Buckeyes. Use the promo codes WCE10 or WCE20 for Ticket Smarter and the Ticket Smarter mobile app. All right, commercials out of the way. We got to get out of here shortly. We are owed one more underdog from you and from me for the audience on the Winning Cures Everything platforms. Where are you going? Are you going to Orlando, which I was am. not touched by the hurricane, and LSU and Florida State? Is that where you're going for your third pooch? I am headed that way. The Seminoles, uh, b basically a home game, right? A home neutral site, if you will. Uh, look, Florida State's catching two and a half points here. My number on this is 
four in favor of LSU, at like four and a half, I'm going against it. I don't trust the number. Look, LSU two and five against the spread away from home last year. Uh, Florida State was two and one against the spread as a dog last year. In this spot, I, I talked on the BetUS show about this. Florida State was number 11 in explosive play rate margin last year. That's basically, they're really good at creating explosive plays, and they're really good at stopping other teams from creating them. LSU, on the other hand, they were number 99. They were not great at creating them. They weren't great at stopping them either. So you have an explosive play advantage for Florida State, especially with the guys that they got at wide receiver, right? You got Benson at running back. You got Keon Coleman, who came in from Michigan State at wide receiver. And then, of course, Johnny Walker doing his thing, right? So I, I think they've got the better quarterback as well at Florida State. I think Jordan Travis is better than Jaden Daniels. This is something Parker brought up. Uh, the sack to pressure ratio, right? He was like 31% of the quarterback pressures that Jaden Daniels faced, he ended up being sacked on him. He he can't make a quick enough decision with the ball. I'd, I'd like, I like Jordan Travis. And, and if you look at the trenches where LSU has an obvious advantage, especially depth-wise, Mason Smith being out, I think, is a pretty big deal. He's suspended for this game for LSU. Yep. And I think Florida State starters are not that far off from what LSU has on their starting offensive and defensive line. So... Yes, depth-wise, if this was later in the year, I think this would be a bigger deal. But I think Florida State's going to come out of the gate hot. I like them to win the game outright. So I'll take Florida State plus the I love half. it. I love it. And by the way, I'm, I'm referencing this again. A year ago, this was a game where Florida State had played a game. LSU had not. We talked about it then. I liked the Seminoles then, and they won in the most dastardly way with a blocked extra point. <laughs> the tying touchdown for overtime, denied overtime on the blocked extra point in the Superdome. Again, this is in Orlando, about three, three and a half hours, depending on how fast you drive on the interstates, from Tallahassee, from the Panhandle. And the Knolls were last there winning all the Cheez-Its in the Cheez-It Bowl against uh, Oklahoma. It will be very interesting to see, does Florida State come out firing here in this game for Mike Norvell? Again, they have had their practice disrupted by Hurricane Adalia uh, for this week, disrupted midweek. There's a day later to prepare for Sunday, so they're getting to prepare as Thursday becomes Friday and Friday becomes Saturday for an extra day. Huge game Sunday night. Playoff implications for later in the year uh, for both of these teams. Let's see what happens. I love you sticking with the Seminoles. I'm surprised it's not a pick'em game. You'll take the points. You like the Seminoles for Three Dog Thursday purposes. I know a lot of Garnet and Gold people trying to get into this game. Uh, oh, not yes. far from where I am. It's about 70 miles to the east of where I am in the Tampa Bay area for Florida State LSU Sunday night. One more doggy, and then we're done. I'm going uh, to the new Big 12, the new Big 12 that now has Cincinnati, that now has – uh, UCF that now has BYU and it now has the Houston Cougars uh, in the Big 12. Houston and Texas San Antonio UTSA. This was a great game a year ago, a triple overtime game that Houston won a year ago. Now they play in Houston uh, here for this matchup with UTSA. And I I've been interested in this line. Gary, just give me a quick insight before we get out of here. This line was Houston favored at one point. It's now swung in favor of the Roadrunners. I like Holgerson's team. I like the Texas Tech transfer, Donovan Smith. I worked the game a year ago where Donovan Smith and Texas Tech on national radio beat Texas, and he played well in that game. I like him as the transfer. I know UTSA has the quarterback that's been there forever, Frank Harris, who's really oh, yes. good. Is this his 12th season? Is this that's his 15th seventh season? Seventh officially, I'm, but it feels like seventh a seventh. Okay, <laughs> so give me a little bit on this line movement because Houston was originally favored. Now I'm getting points. I'm all over that for Three Dog Thursday. Give me something on that real quick. The Roadrunners are the darlings, right? You know, meep, meep, all that good stuff. Everybody loves them. However, this thing has gone haywire. You it, Look, Houston was favored by two and a half points. They're now a dog by two and a half points. My number on this makes Houston a four and a half point favorite. Wow. I, yeah, I, I think that Houston I'm stealing. Is, I'm stealing points here, basically. you think. Houston is the significantly more talented team. And, and we talked about this one on the Big US show as well. But this is one thing that was brought up is... UTSA has a lot of returning production. They do have quite a bit of talent, but it's all developed in-house. It's it's guys that have come up through the program. Houston, what they're trying to do, I mean, they bring in Tony Mathis, the uh, running back from West Virginia. They bring in Donovan Smith, of course, you mentioned from Texas Tech. They 
they've got a bunch of guys that they have brought in from other Power Five programs that, it, look, recruiting rankings, all that kind of stuff, it, it matters more what you do with them when you get them, but they have a big-time talent advantage. So the portal talent stuff, how does that compare to the guys that have been built up in this same system? That's what's going to be interesting about this. I think Houston has the talent advantage. Uh, so I, I'm with you here. I think that Houston actually wins this game. Uh, the fact that it's gone through two and a half, like UTSA, they, they are pulling off kind of what Boise did back in the day. Uh, the national media loves them. Uh, Roadrunners are a, a fun mascot to pull for, and uh, and their games are fun. Everybody sees them, and they got a, a fun offensive system. But at UTSA, by the way, another new offensive coordinator this year. I think it's the third straight year that they've had one. Eh, and then of course they lose uh, 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 Zachary Franklin, who head over to uh, Ole Miss. And uh, the other wide receiver, Clark, may not be able to play here. Now, Cephas is going to play. He's going to be fine. They got weapons. But just some options out there that UTSA might not be the most dominant team here. Fa a fun game. Fascinating game. Again, Houston at home, 6 local time, Saturday night. I will take them. I will take the points. With that, we've gotten to the finish line of another episode of Three Dog Thursday. Again, we're here every week. On Thursdays, hence the name on the Winning Cures Everything platform. Gary's got great content throughout the week on the YouTube channel, Twitter, Twitch, everywhere, winningcureseverything.com. Again, if you're only hearing us, come find the video show. If you're seeing us, take us in podcast form at Three Dog Thursday, wherever you get podcasts, Apple Podcasts, uh, Spotify, Spreaker, Google Podcasts, Three Dog Thursday in podcast form. Gary Seegers, again, by means of review, has the USF Bulls, the Northwestern Wildcats, and the Florida State Seminoles, two Florida teams for his underdogs. I'm going a Friday night Hawaii. I'm going a Saturday night San Jose State, and I'm going a Saturday night Houston for the underdogs. Anything else in closing, my friend, before we're gone? I don't believe so. I'm uh, I'm excited to see about this, uh, <laughs> as funny as it sounds, the Northwestern Rutgers game. 11 a.m. on CBS on Sunday, uh, Sunday morning football on Labor Day weekend give that to me. I will take that. We've got we've got Thursday games, Friday games, all the way through Labor Day. Everybody be safe over the Labor Day holiday. By the way, the weekend concludes with Clemson and Duke Monday night in an ACC showdown. Uh, Clemson getting uh, giving a lot of points in that matchup at Durham at Duke. Bevy of games. Again, I'll be on the call on Penn State and West Virginia. Can West Virginia hang in? They haven't played in 30 years, by the way. Penn State has owned the all-time series, 49-8-1. Can West Virginia's Neil Brown's team hang in? Can they run the ball? Or is Penn State a top-10 preseason team going to roll all over them? Again, LeVar Arrington and I are calling that game on national radio. I'll report back next week on Three Dog Thursday. On, that, on how that all goes. Gary, I love it. Thank you. Thank you again for everything you're doing with Winning Cures Everything here and the uh, and the Three Dog Thursday show and the podcast. I appreciate your help. Much love, my brother. Have a great weekend and good luck with the plays. Absolutely. Absolutely. Good to be here as always. Can't wait. Can't cannot. Wait. Cannot. <laughs> both of us. Thank you for being with us. Good luck. Woof, woof. Good luck on the underdog plays this weekend from all of us here with Winning Cures Everything and Three Dog Thursday.